Hey guys, this is Mitch with Fine Point CGI, and today we're going to continue our kind of mini series, I guess, of uh, UI tutorials inside of Godot. And today we're going to be talking about theming. Now, first off, why would you want theming and what's the importance of theming? Well, the importance of theming is that it allows you to have a reusable bit of, I guess, code or design that reflects throughout your entire project. Now it's easier once I actually show you and explain it to you. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and jump right into Godot and I'll just kind of explain it as I go. Okay, so now that we're in Godot, what I'm going to do is I am going to zoom out a little bit. I am going to actually, well, no. I'm going to go ahead and add a button here. So if I come down here and I find myself a base button, button let's zoom in and let's expand that button out and just bring it down here and let's throw some words in here and let's just say i don't know test button if i want to change how this button operates or how it looks i can come down to like custom styles let's say and say i don't know on um so i can come down here and i can click on my normal and i could add in a new style box texture and then i could go ahead and edit this and drag in this texture right and that's all well and good and that button is styled and it looks pretty well i mean relatively pretty right but what it doesn't do is it doesn't allow it to be reusable so if i were to add a second button in here let's just type in button this time it'll be easier and i drag this out these two are not the same you know you can see if i look at the custom style it's not the same so what we can do is we can actually create what's called a theme and a theme allows you to save styles between buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. So if I click on a theme and I go new theme, I right click and I'm going to go ahead and save this just because it's a good idea. So we will call this um, default menu theme just because I like to have things semi descriptive when I name things. So default menu theme, and then we're going to go ahead and right click, or you can double click or single click. I should say it's a single or double it's single click. And you can see here, all of the themes of this button. So you can see all the little cool things in this preview window here. Now, the beauty of this little preview window is it shows you how all these buttons and how all these um, different UI elements are going to um, reflect your theme. So it's really nice and it provides a, a really compact way to see how your theme's going to work throughout the entire project. So what we're going to do is we're going to click edit theme and we're going to add a class item. Now a class item versus item um, a class item is a group of items. So for instance, like a button or a toggle button or a disabled button is all kind of under the class of button, whereas an item is specific to that button. So if I add item button, it'll only affect the button, not the toggle button or the disable button. So I always suggest just use class item. It's easier and it just makes things a little simpler to work with. And then what we'll do is we will click these three little dots here and we will click on button up here. And then we will click add all. Hey, so apologies. I uh, didn't have my little uh, thing uh, showing up. So that's my fault and my apologies. But what I would do is I would go and add a button resource. And now what it's gonna do is it's gonna come out over here into this little section here. So if we click on button, you'll see that we have different colors so we could change like the font color and you'll see that it will reflect on these buttons so if i were to make them red you can see that they show up as red if i make them dark red they show up as dark red if i make them pink they show up as pink i mean it's pretty simple right so we'll keep that as white for now font color disabled you can actually change that you can see how it affects the disabled button here when i change that so that's great Oh, and I clicked off of it naturally. Um, if you come down to constraints, you can change like 
height separation. So the more you have that, the more height separation there's going to be within your, um, there's going to be more height separation within your buttons. If you go to fonts, you can actually change the font of your button. So this is where we get into some cool stuff. Let's go to a website called DaFont and let's go ahead and pick a font. So let's go to Google and we'll, we'll go to DaFont and we will click on DaFont. And then we're gonna go ahead and pick a font. I don't know, something like Little Cupcakes. That sounds like a good one. So if we go ahead and download this one and we save it, and then we go ahead and open it up in here and we extract little cupcakes. And then we have ourselves a little font here. So if we go ahead and drag this in, that will import it into Godot. We're gonna drag it into Godot and then we're gonna take this, we're gonna click on our fonts. We're going to go to a new dynamic font. Now the difference, a bitmap font is pictures. So something like a image texture or something like that. And a dynamic font is something where you're using more of like an actual font from DaFonts or any other font website. So if we click on dynamic font and we open that up, you will see that it kind of brings this little drop down. You can change your settings, extra spacing, font, and fallback. So if we go ahead and drag little cupcakes into our font data, you will notice that these buttons will have changed. So I can change like the size of the font. I can change the outline style. So if I wanted to add an outline to it, let's say a little single pixel black outline, right? To give it more of like that cartoony feeling, things like that. So we'll keep that cartoon feeling because I kind of like it. And to kind of illustrate it on this button, we'll add some text in here so you can kind of see how it would look. So how it would look. All right. So that's how it would look. Now, let's also look at some other things um, inside of here. And you see how there's a little filter button here. I, I kind of suggest you click it because using the filter can help make it less blurry. So if I zoom in on this, see how it's kind of blurry. If I use a filter, it kind of blurs out those lines so it can make it look a little better. That's kind of a little tidbit there to just kind of make your stuff look a little nicer. And fallback is useful if you want it to fall back to something. So if, so if for some reason the font data breaks, you can give it another font to fall back on just in case somehow it doesn't get loaded. Now, if we come down to styles and you can see we're still inside the theme. So remember how we had custom styles here and we have styles inside of here. This is the same stuff that's in here, here. So if you look at custom styles, you can see here versus here, it's the same stuff. Um, the difference is this is globally and this is more locally. So if we do a style here, you can do a lot of different options here. So if I were to click on this, you can see we have style boxes here and style boxes are basically a editable bitmap that allows you to kind of adjust how it looks, if that makes sense. Um, it makes more sense once you start using it, but just note that it's, it's useful. And we're gonna to need to create a style box texture. So go ahead and create a style box texture. And actually I did it on the wrong one. So let me clear that and let me go with normal, my apologies, and do a new style box texture. You'll see that it completely removes our style on this. So if I right click and you have to right click this cause there's a bug in Godot currently in 3.2 that if you double click this, it closes all of it. So if you just right click this and go to edit, you will see it's looking for a texture. Now I'm going to kind of explain how to create a texture. So that way you understand how, uh, styles are created and then we can go from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and open up an app called Krita providing. It feels like opening. Awesome. So if you don't know what Krita is, if we go to Google, you can type in, Krita and it's right here. Go ahead and click on the get Krita now and it will go ahead and download it once you click this little download button. And that'll give you a uh, art application um, for um, doing different styles, different things like that. So now that we're in Krita, what we can do is we can go file new and we're gonna set it to something small, like 30 pixels by 30 pixels, okay? 
and we will create that. And now what we want to make sure that we do, if you don't know anything about Krita, that's totally fine. You don't need to know anything about Krita to do this. All you need to know is this is your brush. Okay. This is your eraser. So if I were to use my brush and I draw and I use my eraser, I can erase those drawn uh, strokes. Pretty simple. My color is up here so I can change my color of what I'm going to draw. So if I were to change these colors and one thing that you need to know is the different brushes. Now there are a lot of brushes and I'm not going to go through all of them, but what I would do is I would scroll through until you find a brush that looks like this right here. This is the pixel brush. And in general, for doing the style of tutorial that I'm doing here, this is what you're going to use. So now if we drag this down, make our color wheel pretty large, and let's go ahead and fill this with a base color. Let's say something, I don't know, like this nice blue color. Now what we're going to do is we're going to pick something a little bit darker and we're going to drag along this line here. Oh, I missed a little bit. So I will uh, go back to that color by hitting by uh, going up here and clicking this little button up here. And I'll clear that. And then I'm going to choose a lighter color here or up here like that. And then I will choose kind of a middle color somewhere in here for the sides, which is just slightly darker, but not by a lot, not enough for it to be that big of a deal. So we'll do this. You can see that I am terrible with a mouse. Normally I would have my draw pad for this. That's okay. And then we'll go back and click on this and then we're going to go, oh, whoops. Let me see. It is this one, I think. Yeah. So we'll draw that in and we'll draw that in. Now you can see we got a nice little simple. If we zoom out by using our mouse wheel, you can see how it looks. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to click file, save as, and we are going to save this as a JPEG file. And we are going to navigate to our project. So I've navigated already to Godot UI theming and we will say button underscore normal uh, dot JPEG. And we want to make sure we have 100% quality. If you do it at 80% quality, it compresses some of your textures and you don't necessarily want that for this specific uh, use case. So let's hit OK and we will reopen up Godot and you will see that our button has already been loaded. So if we go up here and we drag this into our texture of our style box, you'll see suddenly it looks like our button. Now it's a little on the finicky side because you can see kind of like this little dithering effect going on. See that? So what we can do if we want to go for more of like a pixel arty style look, if we click on our button and we click on import and we change our preset to 2D pixel and re-import, it'll keep that 2D pixel arty feeling to it. Now, something that you'll notice is this, it feels like this is a little bit larger than it should. And the reason why is because as you expand this, you will see that this little bit here gets larger. See that? See how the bigger the button gets, the bigger these get. And we don't want that, right? So what you can do is you can do what's called a margin here. And what you can do is you can say margin of one, margin of one, margin of one and margin of one. And what that will do is that will snap all of those one pixels to be one pixel. See how it's one pixel long, no matter how small or how large this button gets, it'll always be the same size. So that's just a good uh, tip to make things look better and more consistent throughout your UI. Now, what we can do is if we reopen or if we uh, come back to our theme, so if you were to unclick and click, or if you just go ahead and click on your default theme and then open up your styles here, you can go ahead and add in a pressed um, style. You can see here when I hover over it, how it goes, how it goes dark. And when I click it, it does this really weird, like, um, 
transition or not transition, but this gradient effect. And I don't like that. That's not how I want this thing to be themed. So if we go back to uh, Krita and uh, we just kind of go with a darker color, let's say, and let's go ahead and use the fill tool and fill it. Well, that didn't fill it the way I wanted it to. So if we go to tool options and pull our threshold down, that'll fix that. And if we go file, save as, button pressed. Now this is bad form. You probably shouldn't do it this way, the way I'm the way I'm doing this, because you should save everything as layers or as multiple files so that you're not losing your um, previous version of that button. So I'll kind of show you how I would approach that. So what I would do after I save this is I would uh, control Z to undo this. I would duplicate this. So duplicate, click. And now I have a layer here of normal and I would name this normal and I would name this pressed. So now I have my normal and not my pressed here that I can refer back to if I ever need to make changes. So now if I minimize this, and I see that I have button pressed. I once again, change my preset to pixel. Then I go back to my theme and I do pressed and do it as a new style box texture. I right click it, I edit it. I drag in my button pressed onto my texture. And then I once again, set up my margins one, 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 and one. In this case, it's one, 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 and one, but you might want it to be, you know, two or three or four, depending on how you set up your, your image to reflect how it's going to look. But now if I go back to my theme, so if I click this little button up here, when I press it, you'll see it changed it to be more in line with my cartoony style that I'm attempting to go for. So now that we've set this up, why is this useful? What does this do for me, right? Well, if I go ahead and I click on this button and I remove this theme, so I clear it and make sure that you've saved it here. See how it's saved? If you don't save your theme, so if you don't click this save button and you clear it, you will lose it. So just as a note, don't do that. If I clear it, you'll see it goes back to the exact way that it used to be. And then if I click on this and I undo my custom style on this, I can go above both of those buttons and click on my control and I can click on my theme and I can drag my theme in here. And now all the buttons underneath that theme or underneath that UI element follow that theme. So that means every button I make from this point forward right? Every single UI element I create is going to follow that theme. And if this isn't blowing your mind, then I don't know what would, because this will save you a lot of trouble in the future when you're doing stuff. So that's going to do it for us, guys. Uh, we talked about theming. We talked about creating your button JPEGs and uh, downloading different um, fonts. We talked about the importance of theming. And really, that's that's about it. You know, if you guys have any questions, hit me up in the comments. You know, if you enjoyed this video, obviously hit me with a like. If you disliked it, go ahead and hit me with the dislike. It's fine. Um, I uh, would love to know more about what you guys would like me to do. So if you guys have suggestions, again, throw them in the comments below, and I'm more than happy to cover any subject you guys are interested in. With that being said, thank you guys again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks.